Hi, I'm James Dunn. Welcome to the Inside Network. Welcome to In Depth. As the Australian economy slows down and grapples with rising interest rates, I'm joined today by Mick Wright-Smith, founding partner at Epsilon Direct Lending, to discuss the firm's new direct lending offer to the market, the Epsilon Direct Lending Senior Loan Fund. Welcome, Mick. Thank you, James. Great to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Tell us about the main features of the new fund. Okay, Epsilon Direct Lending, um, we lend to mid-market borrowers, uh, James, who require growth capital to, um, to grow the earnings of their, of their business. Um, and that's, that's what we do at Epsilon. And, and we, we have a fund that's two years old now um, that has been uh, providing those solutions for those companies um, and to our investors. Um, our existing investor base um, gave us some feedback, James, that they were looking for, for two things in addition to our existing fund. Um, and one was liquidity and the other is uh, a more focused uh, in investment product. Um, and so the new senior loan fund, James, um, has uh, been, in, uh, we've created that in response to that investor feedback and provides, number one, some liquidity. So 10% of the fund at all times is sitting in cash. Uh, so monthly liquidity for investors. Uh, and also um, the uh, investment criteria is restricted to senior loans only. So they're the two key features of the senior loan fund. So in the original fund, uh, how much of the fund was uh, was outside senior and into subordinated and other areas? Yeah, very little. About ten percent um, of of the Epsilon Direct Lending Fund is in a you know non senior loan situation. So what makes Epsilon different, and and, and the loans you can make different to to the traditional banks that. Um, supported this market before uh, companies like yours came into being? Well, the banks continue to support this market. Um, in fact, they, they own it, James. And, th you know, the mid-market in Australia, it's a deep and diverse uh, universe of companies, over 30,000 businesses mm. and operating businesses in Australia, you know, fit the definition of, of mid-market. Um, the major banks in Australia dominate lending to mm -hmm. those companies um, and, and continue to do so. Um, the reason that uh, those companies come to Epsilon uh, uh, in, in, um, outside of uh, the traditional bank financiers um, is primarily for service, James. Mm -hmm. It's for service. Um, so they come to us um, because we can give them... We don't cut corners in terms mm -hmm. of our process. Um, we're as thorough on the diligence process as, as, as mm -hmm. a bank, if not more so. Um, however, we can provide speed to market. Um, our decision-making mm -hmm. process is you know, flexible and, and uh, efficient. Um, and therefore, when a, a mid-market company, you know, wants to borrow money for growth to acquire a competitor, for example, mm. we can give them um, certainty of funding, mm. which is what they're looking for um, outside of the banks. And is it, Mick, that uh, the, the banks might have a, a, a quite a uh, strict template framework for making growth capital loans and, 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 and that you're a bit more willing to look outside that? You, you, you know the lender a bit better and are prepared to be a bit more bespoke? Yeah, that's true. Uh, so as well as, uh, you know, service speed to market, certainty of funding, um, the, the other uh, uh, additional feature of our service to borrowers is to provide them some flexibility within their loan structure. Um, now the banks can, can have a fairly mm. cookie cutter approach mm. to how they structure these types of loans and they can be quite restrictive to uh, what the company wants to achieve, you know, in the short to medium term. Um, we're able to accommodate you know, the, the company's requirements within our loan structures to, uh, to enable the company to grow the way they want mm. to grow. How quickly can you respond through to actual lending the money c compared to the banks? Oh, look, it's, it's, not a, it's not a quick process. It never is. Mm. Um, uh, these, you know, we, we start from the beginning, James, with, with a company. Um, and so when we first meet a company, you know, the quickest we can you know, provide the loan and, is probably a couple of months. Mm. Now that, that assumes that the company's not prepared and doesn't have the information mm. we need. Mm. Um, but that's, you know, typically it's a two month process from, from meeting mm. the company um, to actually mm. uh, closing on the loan opportunity. How resilient is that? You mentioned 30,000 businesses probably in the universe. How, how resilient are they to some of the things I was talking about in the introduction, rising interest rates, but there's also inflation, low GDP growth, 
consumers, who, if they're selling directly to the consumer, they're under a lot of pressure. Yeah. How resilient are you finding your universe? Well, the uh, the mid market um, is is uh, you know a deep universe of companies as as we've discussed. Um, one uh, redeeming feature of the mid market. Um, is, is that uh, most companies um, are privately owned mm. um, and they're reasonably conservative in their capital structures. And what that means is that their financial leverage tends to be lower and more conservative than larger cap companies. Mm -hmm. uh, so when um, all of those things come to bear, that pincer mm -hmm. movement of you know, inflation and rising interest rates and cost of capital up and you know, uh, decreasing demand for product and so on, if you have a, a heavily um, uh, leverage mm. financial structure, as large cap companies can have, um, you're going to come under a serious amount of stress. In the mid-market, that financial leverage tends to be a lot more conservative. Mm -hmm. So your starting point um, uh, is, is much better uh, if conditions deteriorate. That said, James, um, over the next 12, 24 months, um, as economic conditions deteriorate, there are going to be winners and losers in the mid-market also. Mm -hmm. If we look at things through the lens of the financial advisor, what do you think advisors need to know in allocating to credit, including things like the, the benefits for, for their clients and, and, and just flowing from that, what do you think are some of the common misconceptions about the, the private lending arena? Yeah, sure. Uh, in, in private credit, in particular in mid-market direct lending, James, the, the three benefits um, investors will get from mid-market direct lending to operating businesses, they'll get uh, capital preservation, defensive income, and number three, a floating rate return. So, so that's what they're set up for. Advisors should be thinking, well, that all sounds good. Mm. Advisors should be thinking, I need a manager who can deliver on those three things, who's got the experience to deliver on it. Um, so advisors should be thinking, if I'm going to be selecting a manager, I want to make sure they've got a long track record in this space. Of, of creating these types of loan investments, um, you know, and through through cycles as well, mm. not just in the good times. Um, so that's uh, what I'd suggest advisors look out for is is that track record and experience. I think uh, number two, you're asking, you know, what um, what they sh should they be wary of? Mm. Uh, I think one common misconception in our market, uh, James, is that uh, all senior loans are the same. Um, so the, the the term senior loan is mm. bandied out quite around quite a bit. Um, and if you think, if, if investors want those first two things I mentioned, you know, defensive income, um, capital preservation, um, senior loans should fit the bill, but mm -hmm. not all senior loans are the same. So we see some senior loans that are uh, senior secured, but they're to loss making companies. Mm -hmm. They're actually more, you know, the, the risk profile of those loans is more equity like mm -hmm. than it is debt like. So I'd say be, be wary of the term. Um, you know, senior loan mm. uh, risk because it can mean different things. With all of uh, the headline backdrop effects that I, that I mentioned, the, the economy's not travelling that well. Yesterday's uh, GDP figures tell us that. So what, what's the outlook for direct lending? Um, obviously the mid-market is, is not the same as uh, the BHPs or the West Farmers of the world, but from your perspective of uh, lending money to the mid-market, what, what's the outlook for it? Oh, outlook, well, very positive in mm. short, um, and let, let me unpack that. Um, so n number one, um, James, is kind of the, uh, the, the international perspective. Um, in, in the US, 90% uh, of this type of funding is provided by funds. Mm. And banks provide maybe 10% of this type of funding. Um, in the UK and, and across uh, continental Europe, um, it's not quite as extreme, but, but it is a fund-dominated market, and banks you know, make up maybe 30%, 40% mm. of the market. So that's what's happened offshore. Mm -hmm. Australia is still absolutely dominated by, the, the mid-market direct lending is still absolutely dominated by the, the major banks. Um, however, um, the, that is trending away because of a few reasons. Um, the main one is the regulatory pressure mm -hmm. uh, from Bale 3 in particular that has come to bear on these types of corporate loans. So it is quite expensive for a bank to hold a corporate loan on their balance sheet. Um, compared to, say, a residential mortgage. Mm -hmm. So the return on equity that a, a bank, the bank's shareholders receive on a residential mortgage uh, vis-a-vis a, mm -hmm. a corporate loan, um, you'd, you'd go for the residential mm -hmm. mortgage every day of the week. Um, so, so that means that while banks still dominate the market, they are making it harder for borrowers. Mm -hmm. uh, and the third point is kind of the economic conditions we're in now, um, James. So what happens when 
uh, when ec economic conditions become um, uncertain and begin to deteriorate, uh, banks become risk off. Uh, so they don't stop lending, um, but they, uh, they tend to lend less money, mm -hmm. they make it harder for borrowers, they take longer to decision processes, uh, they make their borrowers you know, jump through more hoops and so on. Uh, and so what that means is that we see more opportunities, you know, more mid-market corporate borrowers coming to us uh, for a solution. So for all of those reasons at Epsilon, you know, we feel very optimistic about mid-market direct lending in Australia. I've been going in depth with Mick Wright-Smith, founding partner at Epsilon Direct Lending. Mick, thank you very much. Absolute pleasure, James. Thank you for having me.